It's BC for Get Lowered, and it's time to do an oil change on my Harley Davidson Road King. Now, the oil change on the Road King is pretty straightforward, except we're actually going to be changing out the oil, the transmission fluid, and the primary fluid as well. And so if you look here, you'll see these two caps. Now, these caps are not going to match your caps because these are aftermarket, but the cap on the left is for the oil. The cap on the right is for the transmission fluid. I like to start by loosening up that oil fill cap. That way, when we pull the drain plug, it keeps us from having any sort of vacuum and it allows the oil to flow freely. As you can see here, I've already loosened up the cap for the transmission fluid as well. Now it's time to get our bearings. So we're going to go right underneath the points cover, right under the floorboard, and you're going to see two plugs here. Now, don't be fooled by the plug on the left. That one is for your crankcase. You don't really have a reason to remove that one. We're going for the plug on the right. Now, all of your drain plugs, they all remove with the same tool. You can use a quarter inch Allen wrench. Here, you can see I'm using a ball end Allen wrench. It just allows me a little bit of flexibility to kind of get around the rest of the pans and then pull out the oil plug. Now that we have the plug removed, it's a really good time to take a look at it. We're going to start by taking a look at the magnet on the end of it. That magnet, you're looking for any kind of buildup, any kind of debris or residue. If it's the one from your oil plug, it should be pretty clean. If it's not clean, it may be time to take your bike to a mechanic and have them figure out why. So we can go ahead and wipe it off, and then we can take a look at the rubber O-ring that sits at the bottom of the plug. Now, these are really cheap insurance. You can buy a pack of about 10 of them for something like $2. So instead of trying to reuse it, just go ahead, pull it off, replace the thing, and give yourself a little peace of mind. Here you can see we've got the new O-ring and there's a nice big gap at the base of the plug. Just slide it down into place and you may have to roll it in the last little bit. Seat it nicely and then you can go ahead and reinstall your plug. Our next stop is the oil filter. We're just using an oil filter wrench here to back this off. And you'll notice I don't have a funnel under this. I don't have a rag under this or a piece of cardboard or anything. There's just going to be a little bit of a mess no matter what it is that you use. So I kind of suck it up and deal with the fact that I'm gonna drip some oil whenever I remove this filter. So I back it off just a little bit with the filter wrench and then I'll go ahead and pull the filter wrench off and remove the rest of it by hand. Letting the oil drain out of it into my oil pan. Next up, we wanna take our new filter and we wanna take some of our clean oil and just give a light little schmear around the O-ring on the oil filter. We're doing this to prevent it from sticking when we try to screw it back into place. So, you've probably seen that there is a nut on the back of that oil filter. Do not use that to tighten the filter down. We're really only going hand tight with this. If you use a tool to tighten down that filter, when you go to take it off for your next change, you're gonna be hating life. Give it a nice firm grip, tighten it into place, and leave it alone. Now, we're going back to the transmission. These are the two plugs that we talked about before. That's the oil plug and the crankcase plug. And right back behind those, you're going to see the drain plug for the transmission. Now, if you happen to have a cross member like my bike does, you're going to drip some oil on this. It's okay, just remember to wipe it off. Use the same quarter inch Allen wrench to remove this plug, and then you're going to go through the same procedure, checking the end of the plug to make sure that it doesn't have any nasty buildup on it, and also changing out that rubber O-ring. Our final drain plug sits right here underneath your derby cover. It's over on the primary side of the bike, and it uses, again, the same quarter inch drain plug as all the rest of them. This is for your primary fluid. So you're going to look right underneath your primary cover, and there's your bolt right there. Give you a little bit better look at the bottom of it, and again, as you can see, just a quarter inch Allen head is all you need to take care of it. The refill spot for your primary fluid actually sits behind your derby cover. So if you're like me and you end up having a passenger footboard in the way, you're going to have to remove the footboard and then you're going to have to pull the five screws that hold the derby cover in place. On mine, there are T25 Torx. Be very careful with these because the heads do strip out very easily. Now it's time to refill the fluids. I chose to go for Redline Full Synthetic, and so I bought the Redline Power Pack, which comes with this incredibly handy little funnel. It fits right into your fill holes. 
check your owner's manual or your factory service manual and you can find out exactly how much fluid your bike holds. So for mine, I actually use about three and a half quarts of 20W50 full synthetic for the engine oil. And then it's one quart for the transmission fluid. And then it's a quart and about a third for the primary fluid. The power pack only comes with one quart. So you'll have to order another quart of the primary fluid, but you'll have the rest left over for your next change. After you've filled your oil, go ahead and start your bike. Let it run for a minute. We want to load that filter back up with oil, and then we need to check the level on the oil again. Now you're supposed to check the bike's oil level with it sitting on the side stand. So kick the bike over, take a look, and make sure that you've got enough oil in there. Then top it off if you just happen to need a little bit more. Filling your transmission fluid looks exactly like filling your oil, so I'm not going to waste your time and make you watch me do it. The only difference is you're only going to use one quart and you don't have to start the bike before you check the level. So now we moved over to the other side of the bike and it's time to refill the primary fluid. As you can see here, I've gotten the derby cover off and you can see a small cutout at the bottom of the primary cover there. That's where we're going to aim our funnel. If you happen to have a thin funnel sitting around, then that's great. It's going to work really well for you. If you end up buying the Redline Power Pack, the Redline Funnel does work. Even though it doesn't fit down into that hole, it will actually rest up against the clutch basket, and it does prevent the fluid from leaking out all over your driveway. Be careful not to overfill your primary fluid. A lot of people think that because one quart's not enough, they add a full second quart, and that's going to cause problems. It's going to cause issues with the bike not wanting to shift or shifting really hard. So make sure that you're only taking the fluid level up to about the bottom of the chain, which you'll be able to see if you have good light. Otherwise, you're going to need a flashlight to look down inside of the primary. This fluid works by getting thrown all around as the chain passes through it. So you don't want to bathe the chain in it. It just needs to be able to dip its toes in. Once you have your primary fluid filled up, put the derby cover back on, making sure to tighten down those T25s to factory specs, start the bike up, check for leaks, and then you're good to go. I'm BC for Get Lowered. Check out the full line of maintenance tools and supplies at getlowered.com.